Hey everybody, how's it going? Danny Soleil here, aka Travel Man Dan, aka Reading Man Dan. And welcome to day 17 of my 75 hard journey. Woo! 17 days, I've been going strong here. Uh, feeling good, feeling the effects of it. Uh, definitely, I think the water is probably the one thing that I feel the most. Uh, not because of all the times I've been urinating, but I just feel different, right? I, I, I don't know how to explain it, I feel... Uh, very fluid and and smooth. Uh, it's it, it's a weird kind of feeling. I don't know fully how to describe it, but I am in it. I am doing it. If you don't know the 75 Hard Challenge, go ahead and Google it. Um, and I wanted to go ahead and make videos so I could document what it was like for me. So it has been probably the hardest thing to date. Um, it is really hard, and it's not even part of the five tasks because. The thing is, is getting through the tasks are just enough, right? They're just put out there. That's the 75 hard, and they're incredibly hard to go ahead and continue day after day. I'm only in day 17, so I really haven't done anything. But I've chose to make things harder on myself by um, going ahead and making a YouTube video. It is by far the hardest thing of the whole challenge because you're tired, you're exhausted, you got through work, and then you're just like, ah, you know what? I got to make another YouTube video. But... But that's not how the way I'm, I'm taking this approach. I'm looking at it like, hell yeah, I get to make another YouTube video. Definitely hard, but I'm excited about it. Now, as far as the content goes, look, I'm still on crutches. I can't go around and show you a lot of stuff that I'm doing just because it's very slow and I can't hold the camera, that type of thing. Once I get the off the crutches in three weeks, I'll be able to make a little more cooler videos of me uh, out and about. So, so I thought really cool thing to go ahead and do. And I kind of bounced around this idea a few times and uh, I said, you know, why don't I just go ahead and read the tasks off of the, the 75 hard book. And, and I got to thinking, I was like, why start the tasks? Like they're about halfway through the entire book. There's a whole bunch of backstory. And well, since I'm reading Man Dan, I said, you know what? I need content. I need I need to keep creating. I need to be in front of the camera and make a video per day. So 75 days, not easy to do, I'll tell you that. Uh, let's see if I can do that. Um, but I said to myself, why don't I just read the whole friggin' book? All right? Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. And and that's um kind of getting me ready for the reading Man Dan stuff. One of the things I want to do is go ahead and be able to read, obviously, ch uh, children's books and make it fun and entertaining and really let my imagination just, you know, but I also want to go ahead and read like mature classic books, maybe maybe put a couple of episodes on per week, maybe a, a Monday, Wednesday, Friday thing where it's a chapter each, or maybe I just, you know, hum through the entire book and I put it out uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I don't know, but this is really another uh, piece of training ground. And I think that it'll be really informative and provide a lot of value for anybody that's thinking about doing the 75 hard challenge. So let's go ahead and get started. I got the book. I already read it um, as part of the 10 days, the 10 pages of nonfiction per, per day. That was the one test. So I already read this book finished the second book. I'm on my third book already. So that's pretty cool. But let me go ahead and read this to you. And uh, if you don't know, 75 Hard was uh, something that was created by a guy named Andy Frisilla. This dude right here. Andy Frisilla went ahead and created this challenge. And I'm going to read this book right here. 75 Hard. It is um, a tactical guide to winning the war with yourself. Check it out. There it is. Tactical Guide to Winning the War with Yourself. Okay, you can see the reflection out of the studio window, but I'm going to do my best to go ahead and probably read Monday through Friday a chapter, right? And then I figure after 75 days, I'll have been through the book twice. So um, really cool stuff. And if you don't want to read it yourself, if you just want to listen to me read it, um, it's like a lawnmower listening to that guy. <laughs> oh, that's cool too. So let's go ahead and get started. It is a little hard to read in, in this light, but I will make the best of it, okay? All right, so here we go. Who am I and why should you listen to me? I'm Andy Frisilla, not me. Well, he's, he's talking from the book. You get it. If you watch this far, <laughs> you get it. This is the section where I establish my street cred. Let's start when I was a kid, because that's relevant. 
Here's the most important thing you need to know about me. I was seven, eight, ten years old. When I was a kid, I was fat. And when I say fat, I don't mean I had a little pouch. I don't mean I was a little pudgy. I mean, I was the fully inflated Pillsbury Dole kind of kid that girls moved their desk to get away from. And the popular guys made fun of names with like lard, tard, chubby Andy, and fat fuck. Yes, kids do use that kind of language in fourth grade. Stop being naive and wake up to reality. Yeah, they do. I've actually heard it myself. Since I was teased so much, you'd think I have gotten focused and motivated to lose weight to get the approval and popularity that I desperately wanted. But I was clueless and super lazy. I always had my head in the clouds and my hand in a bag of Doritos. I will say this about myself. I did have dreams. Like most people, however, I honestly didn't think I had what it took to achieve it. You notice he says, like most people. In fact, I didn't even understand the concept of achievement. Like most people, I thought building a cool life was a matter of circumstance or luck or some unforeseen force that somehow, through random selection or who knows what reason, made certain people successful and others not. Some sort of iteration of the concept of predestination in regards to success. A force I refer to as the success fairy. Guys, you got to give me a second. I got I got to put the light on. It's really tough for me to read here. Ah, man. Okay, that should be better. Sorry, now I got a huge shadow. We'll figure out the lighting tomorrow. Here we go. <clears throat> Even in grade school. Most of the kids I knew had some vague sense that they needed to do well in class if they had any hope of not being a total loser when they grew up. However, that whole concept was completely lost on me. I really couldn't get myself to care about my homework any more than any kid would care about a local insurance seminar. <laughs> That's pretty funny. The reality is, I don't care because if I did, I would have to admit how hard studying was for me. Basic directions confused me. I had to read my assignments over and over again. I still didn't understand what I read. The teacher would say something and I would need her to repeat it. But I wouldn't raise my hand because I was embarrassed. It didn't even occur to me that I might have some sort of legit learning disability. That, was real, that really wasn't a thing back then. I just assumed from the irritated and frustrated expressions on people's faces that I was clearly just lazy or dumb. Most of the time, I felt like I was both. Things didn't really change as I got older. I did well enough to make it to the next grade level, but not much more. By the time I reached high school, I had gotten into better shape and was able to do well in sports. But overeating was still a daily struggle, and I was the same old underachieving student with one exception. My junior year. I wrote a long research paper on the military aircraft of World War II. I loved working on that project because I've always really enjoyed American history, had a huge respect for the armed forces, and have always been fascinated, more like obsessed, with World War II fighter pilot planes. So I poured myself into that assignment. I found everything I could know about the Vought F4U Cosair, the P-47 Thunderbolt, the Grauman F-6F Hellcat, and my absolute favorite all time, the North American P-51 Mustang. I was so engrossed in the material that I wrote more and more until the paper length reached 60 pages. My teacher was impressed, and I'll be honest with you, it felt good to succeed in an area of life that I thought was a lost cause. I put some hope in my heart. I started thinking, well, if I've become a decent athlete, so if I can get my grades up, maybe I can play football at one of my favorite schools, Texas or Notre Dame. Speaking of Notre Dame, you know that scene of Rudy where he's at, still at Joliet High School? And the... Shit. Let me start that over again, guys. This is a test run, right? Speaking of Notre Dame, you know that scene in Rudy where he's still at Joliet Catholic High School and other students are boarding a bus to visit the University of Notre Dame? 
He tries to get on the bus himself, but the priest stops him and says, Rudy, this is not a sightseeing tour. It's for young men and women considering becoming students at Notre Dame. Rudy responds basically saying, yeah, that's what I want to do more than anything. That's when the priest pulls him aside and shuts him down. Rudy, he says, this is for the smart kids. You don't do well in school. You'll have to do something else. Uh, of course, I'm paraphrasing the scene. Well, guess what? The same thing happened to me. I told one of the adults in my high school, I wouldn't say who because I don't want to be a dick, that I really wanted to play football at Texas or Notre Dame. And this guy, who I really looked up to and respected, said to me, both of those schools have academic standards, Andrew. You're not going to be able to cut it. He followed with a line I'll never forget. Those places are for the cream of the crop, not regular guys. I remember legit thinking, screw you, man. One day you're going to regret that statement. And also, at the exact same time, just feeling like a pissed off loser kid that probably wasn't going to do shit with his life. You know, nowadays people know me as the guy who is confident, fiery, and who has no problem telling people to fuck off when necessary. But I was a kid back then. And what he said hurt. It stung. And it stuck. Just when I was building some confidence in that area, it sowed some doubt and discouragement. So, if that's something you've experienced in your life, I get it. If you feel like you're somehow at a disadvantage because you weren't born with any sort of mental gift or super intelligence either, then you and I have a lot in common. That's right, I'm no Einstein. And by the way, nobody in my family was or is an Einstein either. Elon Musk wasn't my cousin. Steve Jobs wasn't my uncle. I came from a family that wasn't even close to perfect in either intelligence or the way that we related to each other. In fact, we were far from it. My family had, and still has, our share of drama and dysfunction. Normal, right? If I actually told you all the specifics, you'd think it was like something you'd see on the crazy old talk show Jerry Springer. I promise, you wouldn't even believe me if I told you. I don't tell you that to make you feel sorry for me, and I don't tell you that to rip on my relatives. The fact is, I believe 100% that you can speak the truth about what screwed up in your family and still love being part of it. You can acknowledge that people are messed up and still love and appreciate them. I tell you that about my family because I'm guessing that many of you can relate too. Your family tree is probably full of deadbeat dads, crackhead uncles, and juvenile delinquent cousins. <laughs> Jeez, Andy. <laughs> my dad's not a deadbeat and uh, I don't have, think I have any crackhead uncles. You share DNA with scammers, sluts, blue-collar buffoons, and white-collar criminals. The conversations you've had with relatives could be part of a reality show script. The things you've seen in your family life could be recorded and go viral in a couple of minutes. That's why I want to tell you, I get it. I was and I am in the same boat as you might be. I don't have any royal blood in my veins, so I'm very, very confident that there's nothing you faced growing up that I didn't. But I did have one huge, incredible go-to resource in my family that maybe you didn't. A great dad. A dad who taught me life-changing lessons. A dad who knew that he needed to drill hard truths in my head over and over and over again until they finally took. All right, guys. Well, that is chapter one of the book by Andy Frisilla, and it is called 75 Hard, A Tactical Guide to Winning the War with Yourself. That is chapter one. I'm going to try to read Monday through Friday each chapter of the book, and then I'll show you something special and cool that's going on. I'll check in, let you know what my progress is like, um, you know, how everything is going. If I've slipped up, I'll let you know for sure, and then these videos will discontinue. But just for the time's sake, just because, well, I want to continue making content. And uh, let me know if you like this style, this Reading Man dance style. And obviously, we're going to do a much better uh, background, lighting, uh, sound. Hopefully, is okay. 
but uh, everything else is going to, you know, evolve. So I hope that you're going to like this. I hope that you found some value in this video. As you follow along my journey, I hope mainly that it inspires somebody. That one person out there goes, you know what? I watched Danny for 75 days talk about it talk about his experience he read the damn book i listened to the podcast he did it i think i want to give it a try i hope that uh you know if i come away with this i don't care if i get millions and zillions of views and comments and that kind of thing i hope that i can just go ahead and inspire one person so thanks a lot for watching i'll bring you chapter two tomorrow have a great night wherever you are in the world i wish you the very best i'm danny soleil aka travel man dan aka reading man dan and remember it's a big world out there. Make sure you see every bit of it.